I know, we're getting older. We're getting slower. But it doesn't change how we are still unwilling to just give in to the ideas that people have coming against us. We, I, there's a thing comes up. It's called uh, World War Z. It's a zombie apocalypse. The zombies have always been problematic to me. And why? Because now there's somebody else I have to care about. And what happens? You find if you have to care too much, you just don't have enough strength to go forward. So you have to decide what you don't care about. And I know there are many people that are very good at this right now. But look at this. Look at this. World War Z. Ah, an oral history of the zombie wars. It's by Max Brooks. And it's not just by Max Brooks. Before the movie ever came out with that Brad Pitt character. Um... My friend and mentor, uh, Pure Legend, he told me, read this book. And so I read it. And I want you to see how much of it applies today. Oh, no, there goes half my audience. If you're even acting like you care about something, then everybody's going to fucking leave and say that you lied about it ah, without having seen it themselves. But look, there it is. This, if you wonder about me, oh, jeez, I should probably do my hair. Anyone who thinks I do my hair for pleasure, did you just hear what I went through? It's a fucking pain to me. Why would I care that much about you, that you care about my hair? <sighs> but anyway, um, I was told to read this book before I even saw the movie. And I read this book. It's, it's by... Uh, Max Brooks, he's the author of the Zombie Survival Guide. That may be one of those guys from Florida State University or whatever when they talked about it. When the fucking homeless, naked people were attacking people and eating them and then they put the guy that survives in the hospital and you never hear from him again. He's probably in the bottom of the CDC. I, I know there's a fucking Zombie. Plague about to happen. Oh shit. It's not such a big deal because everybody's got guns. It's not like in The Walking Dead when they acted like there were no guns. They're moving through things. Or we need guns. We need ammo. It's like, how is it you could possibly be out of guns and ammo when most of the people are fucking zombies and don't know how to use them? You know, uh, they scared us into getting more guns and ammo. Ha. Well, it's probably about twenty three ninety five a month or a year to get a magazine. Guns and ammo. Anyway, here it is. Here it is. This is a very serious thing I'm about to do for you. I want, I want you to understand why it is it looks like I'm laughing at you all the time. There's the truth. Would you rather me laugh or cry? Because some of this just, it's so harsh, you know. How are we supposed to get through on a daily basis? But let's read it. Look, I even, I highlighted it. 
it's talking about somebody that solved one of the big problems in the zombie apocalypse. It was involving South Africa and things like that, which uh, these days, well, you're not allowed to talk to somebody that, that lives across the border. You can't even go into Ohio and feel comfortable. Paul Redeker is the guy's name that solved the problem there. And it says, ah! Well, it spoke of how he uh, met with um, Mandela. They didn't mention Mandela's name, but they, they write the character as such. And then he says, about that guy, this man will save our people. And then came that moment, the one that historians will probably debate until the subject fades from memory. We're going to talk about it until people are done talking about it because we forget the truth so easily and sometimes we forget history in the process. He embraced the white Afrikaner. To anyone else, this was simply his signature bear hug, but to Paul Redeker, I know that the majority of psychobiographers continue to paint this man without a soul. That is the generally accepted notion. Paul Redeker, no feelings, no compassions, no hearts. However, one of our most revered authors, Biko's old friend and biographer, postulates that Redeker was actually a deeply sensitive man. Too sensitive, in fact. For life in apartheid South Africa, he insists that Redeker's lifelong jihad against emotion was the only way to protect his sanity from the hatred and brutality he witnessed on a daily basis. You wonder why somebody acts like they don't care about you? It's because you are too far gone to reach. You know what it's like for somebody that cares to try to touch that feeling part of you that is just so far against feeling and rooted deeply in doing. If you are doing without feeling, then what you're doing, it will never be properly answered.